Yeah, so it's been a hot minute since I've created a video. All right, so today's project has been inspired by another video posted by a content creator, Callie Halden. He documents his journey creating different projects, and I'm going to be emulating one of his projects today, writing a password manager with Python and PostgreSQL. So I'm probably going to butcher today's project, but you know, it's all about the learning process. So let me go ahead and overview what I've got in terms of the architecture, and what I'm going to be doing in this implementation. The password manager. So yeah, like I said, Kelly is the inspiration here today. I wanted to highlight one quick note here. Now I'm not trying to be pretentious and perhaps I am, but I'm really not trying to be pretentious. When it comes to the storage of passwords, it's often been debated within the industry. I'm actually highlighting this comment here, which talks about storing your passwords through encryption. It's a great train of thought. I know that that isn't necessarily the most effective way to store your passwords. Yes, I am one of those guys of pulling out the NIST guidelines, but in the NIST guidelines, it talks about password storage and how passwords should be uh, stored in hashes with salt. The lesson noted here, something I've learned and will continue to learn is that you can't always trust everything that is out online. It's good to verify your information through multiple sources. Yeah, so I actually got schooled from my own pretentiousness, of course. So this particular comment right here is on the right train of thought, but not entirely correct. But the one directly above is actually in the correct idea or implementation, in my opinion. It all depends on the architecture. Now, yes, my drawing sucks, but don't make fun of me too much. So here we have an application database, think a web application, which takes the username and password fields to create a new account for a website. These newly created or stored credentials will be sent over to a database encrypted while being sent. And once arriving at the database, the password specifically will be stored with a salted hash with best practices. Now, a salt is a random number of bits added to each password. Salts create unique password hashes even if two users choose the same exact password. Now, preferably a key derivation function will be used to store these passwords such as PPKDF2, Bcrypt, Scrypt, Argon2. If the user forgets their password, well, no worries. They don't need to restore the old one. They'll just have to reset it and you can just send an email to them saying, hey, reset it. Now let's move on to a different scenario. This time we have a password which unlocks other passwords. In this case, the master password needs to be stored in a salted hash like we talked about, except we need to derive other secrets or keys from this password. And this is where a key derivation algorithm will come in, effectively creating a child key. Now this child key will be used to encrypt and decrypt the stored child passwords. Now, why can't we just hash them? But we need those passwords to be stored with encryption just in case an attacker were to circumvent the password password functionality. So we must remember hashing provides a one way function from a string to a random bit of strings. Okay, so back to the video. The use of cryptography behind his password manager. Now, in this case, I'm going to be using a master password, which will decrypt my main password vault, as they call it, which has all of my usernames, passwords, and URLs. Now, my implementation may absolutely be wrong, and yep, I was wrong here, but here is my train of thought, and I've used sources such as the KeyPass local password manager, and seeing how that architecture works. So what I'm going to be doing is supplying a master password and a key file for two factors of authentication. Comes to the infrastructure, I'm going to be implementing this through the standard command line, and I'm going to be using PostgreSQL database managed through a Docker container. Now, I already have that Docker container up and running with PostgreSQL. It was super easy to create. Why? Why do you have to ruin the video? I also have Visual Studio Code open with my main functions, and I have already created the Postgres SQL database. So long story short in the big intro, let's go ahead and get started with, well, yeah, I don't really know, creating, I guess, a argument or password argument parser. Well, I guess creating an argument parser for the terminal, and I don't really know what I'm doing, so that's a story of projects. Yes. Okay, so after a little while, I've created an argument parser using the argparse Python library. So it's really easy to make an argument parser. All you have to do is create a new argument parser instance. You can add your options. In this case, I've added a whole bunch of arguments. You can process the arguments using an array of different methods. In my case, I'm using if statements. This is all really, 
really inefficient code, in my opinion. Uh, lots of just code reuse. Let me go ahead and show you what I mean by this argument parser. Here in front of me, I got a terminal. In this case, what I'm going to do is use the dash L flag to list the passwords, usernames, and URLs stored in the Postgres database right now. As you can see, I have three entries, parse them out to make them look a little prettier than this statement down here below. And then I could supply a username, password, and URL. Alrighty, in this case it says record added. Here we go, here is our password. Also, I forgot to mention, I already have a password generator program from one of my previous videos I did. Generates a random password securely using the secrets library. The next task is cryptography, something that I really am really inexperienced in and I really don't know what to do. So this is all about uh, learning, right? Oh God. Everything was smooth sailing until this point. Then cryptography hit and I, well, you'll see. It's been a few days. I went ahead and spent last night trying to figure out the cryptography behind the master password and how it would unlock your vault. In this case, I've created a small Python script. What this Python script does, in essence, is takes a master password, puts that into a key derivation algorithm. Uh, so in this case, I'm using pbkdf2 algorithm, and I supply the salt as well as my master password string. And then I go ahead and use that as my encryption key. And then you go ahead and encrypt it and then you can verify it by entering your master password. One thing to note too, is that I tried adding in a second factor of authentication with a random string. This would live out on a flash drive or I hash those two together. That's added as a string. It's not really working out. All right, so from here, what are the next steps? I have really no idea. I guess to create a master password, which would unlock my vault so then I can have access to my passwords. Yeah, I don't know what I'm doing. I have added the functionality of the master password and password level encryption to individually encrypt each of the passwords stored within the password manager. The master password functionality has really a couple of important functions going on. We have the master password hash. This is the hash that would be stored in this particular case and being compared to. And then I have the encrypt password field. As highlighted in my previous clips, really what I'm trying to do here is create a secret key and then generate an AES key. And then the AES key will be used to encrypt and decrypt those particular fields. Here in front of me, I have the add password parameter. I'm adding a URL, a username, and then the password, click enter. It's gonna prompt you for the master password. You'll type in your master password. It's gonna successfully authenticate. And here in front of me, as you can see, you now have the password. And this is where the encryption or ciphertext resides. My final issue is that I can't decrypt this because Postgres SQL is storing it as a string literal. The only way the encryption works is through bytes. I need to go ahead and figure out how the heck to, I don't know, I guess, decrypt the password because that's important. All right, so after hours upon hours upon hours, I have finally finished what I think is a completed password manager. I had tons of issues with trying to figure out how the heck to get encryption of my passwords and really just figuring it all out. So I think it's completed. All right, so now for the demo. There's a few caveats I want to quickly outline. This is pretty inefficiently written code, or, well, I just want to caveat that I'm a beginner coder, so don't make fun of me too bad. Wow, 121 lines of code. Let's go over the architecture of how this password manager systematically works. First thing that I do is I ask for the master password. What I have is a master password hash that is stored within this variable, and I've opened up the option for a second factor authentication. Now in version two, what I would do is I would take this flash drive right here. I would put uh, some string on a text file. I would insert the flash drive, open the text file, and that could be my second factor of authentication, something you have. If the password hashes line up, it will make a connection to the database. And after that, we're in. So we can go ahead and perform different options. The basic three operations are to create, add, and delete URL, usernames, and passwords. Passwords can be manually added or pre-computed by Python. Once I parse my arguments, 
I add functionality to the different arguments with these if statements. Now I probably should do like if and then elif, but for now, this is fine. For time's sake, I'm not gonna go over all of these. I'm gonna be using the add. What this will do, generate a password of 20 characters long. You can change this to however big you want. Then it's going to encrypt that password. It's going to insert that encrypted password into the database. So you may be wondering, how does the encryption work? You have a key derivation function, which in addition to a salt, allows you to create the AES encryption key. So what I do here is once the encryption key is created, I have a nonce that is added within the ciphertext. Decryption is the same. Once you have your option outlined, it will commit the connection and close the connection. What better way to do this and actually just show you what I mean here? Here in front of me, I have my working directory with the Python file. And I'm gonna go ahead and use the Python program to add a password. In this case, we're gonna go ahead and add cyberacademy.org as our URL. And we're just gonna use some random username, GC Collins. And in this case, there will be a pre-computed password made for us. If we click enter, we're going to be queried for a master password. You can write it down correctly. Then, as you can see, it says successfully authenticated. It's going to add that record as an encrypted text. So this is what's actually inserted into the database. This is just displaying what's uh, the actual password. Now, let's say we want to list the particular passwords and all their URLs. What we can do is go ahead and use the L to list. You can say successfully authenticated. And as you can see here, you can see the URLs, username, and plain text passwords. All right, because I focus mainly on security, I want to address a few basic security concepts within this program. There probably are multiple more than I'm totally uh, overlooking, but for now, the three that I want to focus on are the storage of the hash, the salt, and a parameterized query that I am using within SQL. So to start is the salt. All right, so here you can see that I have a salt. Right now, it's a bytes type and it's just stored in plain text on my master password program. Is it okay to store the salt in plain text? Well, yes. The salt is really made to make uh, rainbow tables harder. Rainbow tables leverage uh, commonly used passwords. So salts help with pre-computation attacks. Salt needs to be unique. In this case, I'm using a static salt. So that, nece that isn't necessarily the best way to do it. Okay, so what about the storage of the hash? As you can see, it's stored hard-coded into master password hash variable. Again, this is okay for the time being because you need the hash to compare your master password that you input. There are a few things that maybe you could do to make it better because right now it's just literally sitting in a variable. Now because this password manager is all local, it really doesn't matter. And then finally is the use of parameterized queries within SQL, if I'm saying that correctly for preventing SQL injections. Here you can see some of my SQL statements, some that insert, update, and delete a particular database row. And I'm also using the percent %s to merge values to a query. So I'm trying to pass parameters to the query. Now there's something to be noted within this article. As you can see, it talks about the dangers of SQL injections. And you can see the single quotes here. Now, Python treats single quotes like the same, um, but SQL does it a little different. So as you can see here, this is a horrible implementation, putting the percent %s or putting the uh, operator within quotes. The best thing to do is when you're passing parameters to queries, you know, make sure that you don't have quotes in within the operator. I tried implementing this in a way of a secure fashion. All right, so that is it for today's video. It was a really fun project to work on. I'll leave my code up on GitHub, of course, removing any of the secrets, such as hashes, passwords, but uh, hopefully you guys have found this helpful and maybe you can implement your own password manager. So that is it for today's video. I hope all is well, and hopefully I can create another video soon, maybe. Until next time, have a good day.